Hi there, this is Phil with Phil Effects, and I've got another tutorial for my Art 184 class. What I want to talk about today is how you can select and isolate an object from a picture so you can make it a foreground object. Very often in After Effects you'll want to uh, have an object, uh, say a bird, a plane, a kite, in this case a flower, where I want to be able to use that as a foreground object. And to be able to do that and composite in uh, photo or in After Effects, the object uh, needs to have a transparent background. And there's numerous ways to do that. I'm going to show you a couple. But uh, Photoshop actually has some very powerful tools that allows you to do this really quite simple and quite easy. So let's go ahead and I'll walk you through how we can do that. And uh, uh, then we'll create a, uh, an object. We'll put it into After Effects and show how that uh, can composite. So I have this flower here. And when I have an object that looks like this, where you have such a striking color difference between the foreground and the background, uh, I like to start using the uh, color, feature, color select feature that Photoshop has. So you go up to the Select menu, and you come down here to Color Range, and you get this sampler. And so I have an eyedropper, and all I need to do is I can click on my image, and it will select colors of that image. So like if I go in here and click on green, you can see it's picking green. And you can see right here what that selection is. If I click on yellow, I can see that now it's picking up just the flower, which in this case is just what I want. Uh, a few couple of things about this menu. You can invert your selection. So in this case, I pick yellow, but it actually is what the selection area is the background because the selection is inverted. Uh, another thing is I can add to my selection. So we can see a bright white here and maybe not so bright here it's a little bit grayer so I can go and click this plus I drop and say alright add yellow right there that's also this shade of yellow and you can see that enhanced my selection it's also uh, starting to pick up some of the background though it might be tough to see on the tutorial but some of that background started to light up there so you have to be a little bit careful with how you're adding because if you add too much like if I add this dark yellow here I'm really starting to pick up some of my background which is what I don't want so let me start over again and let me just click that let me add a little bit more so I'll add that area maybe that area and that looks pretty good a few other things real quick on this menu you can see your selection preview at the moment it says none but I can go down here and we can see a gray scale in my image we can see a straight black mat we can see a white mat and with a white mat you can see some of that backgrounds being selected uh, I don't really care about that we can fix that real quick and there's quick mask which is one of the features in, in Photoshop where you have this red mask. Uh, let's go back to none and I'm just gonna say okay and we're gonna pick that up. So here's my selection. We can see the flower that's been selected and we have what's called the marching ants. Well now we want to refine this selection. So let me hit control plus and zoom in a little bit. And the way I like to refine my selection is I like using the lasso tool and if I press and hold there's the lasso tool, there's a polygon lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool. We're actually going to use all three of these. I'll show you these three real quick but uh, first off we're just doing a rough uh, refining. I'm just going to use the standard lasso tool. So we have the lasso tool here and if I hold down shift notice we have the lasso and there's a little plus there that means whatever I select is going to be added to my selection if I hold down option or alt then that will be subtracted from my selection well I want to add this inside area to my selection so I hold down shift and I just start dragging so I click and drag and I just go down around here and I'm just moving all around and I don't even have to get close I can uh, with this I just get close to it and it selects it. Actually all I need to do is I can even leave it open and it will complete the selection. So see that? I quit there, it completes the selection. Go over here and it completes the selection. So I can just go around here and I can quickly refine this selection that I have by just holding down shift and adding these areas in. and boom. So just that fast we have a rough approximation of what we're looking for. So now we can go in and refine an edge. So if we want to refine an edge let me zoom in a little bit more so control or command plus spacebar so I can drag 
and let's go down here and I'll show you the magnetic lasso tool first. So the magnetic lasso tool tries to guess where that edge is. So you hold down shift because we want to add to the selection. I click and then I'm just dragging the mouse and you can see hopefully there are dots being added by this magnetic lasso tool where it thinks the edge should be. And I come around and I just click, click and if I want to close I can go back up to where I started. See how that goes to a little zero and I can click there and it would close. Or actually what I like to do is I just get close and I double click. Double clicking automatically closes. So the magnetic lasso tool did okay but I like to get a little bit cleaner and I prefer to, I'm a control freak so I prefer to be able to control that myself. So I like using the polygon lasso tool and that works similar but it'll, I can put in the points where I want to specify that edge. So if I hold down shift again and I start clicking, now I can put those points in where I think the edge really should be. And so I can go up here and I think it missed just a little bit on that top part. And come down here. We go over here. We click on that. Like before, I just double click, boom, closes it. And there we go. So there you have it. So I can go in and let's say around here, let's say I want to include this green space in here. So I hold down shift, I click, click, now I come across here, just go outside and just double click, boom, and I added that in very quickly. All right. Let's say down here I want to add just this little amount of green space. So I hold down shift to add, click, click click, 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 boom, boom, double click, there. So that's got it. Okay, so that's pretty good. That, that's a good enough selection, I think. One thing about this is, let's say I'm back on this lasso tool and I have my marching ants going on. If I accidentally click out here, notice that I don't have a plus or a minus, so I'm not adding or subtracting to my current selection. If I just click, my marching ants go away. I just deselected my selection because Photoshop thinks you want to make a new selection. Well, how you can get that back is if you catch yourself right after you clicked with Control Z or Command Z with an undo, your selection comes back. So let's go to Control Zero, Command Zero, so I can zoom to the whole frame. Here's my selection. I think that looks pretty good for my flower. Now what I want to do is I can even refine this just a little bit more. So the way you do that is you use the Refine Edge Selection feature. Uh, you can either get to that with this menu here, uh, or I can click on Refine Edge, or I can go to Select, come down here, Refine Edge, and on Windows it's Alt-Control-R. On a Mac it'd be Option-Command-R. And so I can click on this, and that brings up this Refine Edge window. So let me zoom in on my flower again so we can see that edge. You can see how the edge is selected right now. Now I can go in and I can refine that edge selection even just a little bit more. So I can play with what they call is a smart radius. I can smooth that edge. See how that's smoothing it just a little bit? I can feather it. That makes the soft, makes it for softness on there. I really don't want that for what I'm doing. Uh, I can increase the contrast. That makes for a very hard edge. So it's a very abrupt. I don't want that either. You really want some softness so uh, the uh, the edge is just a little bit soft. I can take the edge and I can shift it in towards the flower or I can shift it out towards the green. Uh, in this case I think I want to just leave that at zero. And here's the feature I like best. So for an output I can select, take the, the output to be a new layer with a mask. And I want to do that because then I can refine my selection by just uh, painting on the mask layer. So let's do that. Say OK. Let's hit uh, Control 0 to zoom back. And now we can see my selection on this flower. And if I zoom in, you can see some of this transparent background is leaking through here. See this where you can see some of this crosshatch? So I don't have a strong selection in these areas. But what I do have now is I have a layer with a mask layer. And I can edit this mask by painting either black or white, depending upon what I want to subtract or add. 
and I can refine that even more. So let's go ahead and do that. So I click on the mask layer. I click on paint brush and here's my brush and I'm picking a brush that's got a hardness of about 75 with a size of 50 and undo that and then I'm gonna paint in either white or black okay on this mask layer. Uh, where the flower exists is white alright so we want to paint in white and watch what happens when I do that see how that is taking the crosshatch transparency of the flower and it is uh, making the selection inside the flower much stronger so we select so we aren't transparent inside the flower now in the background out here remember we had some of that red if I go in here and we look at the uh, no, that won't show it to me but if we uh, go in and you can just make out some of this darkness right in here so there I want to paint in black so I have black and I can paint out here and I can get rid of some of that go back and paint on white excuse me paint in black and I want to paint on here there we go now that's going away okay I didn't have the mask selected so I can take some of this background and I can make sure that some of that goes away okay the other thing remember when you're painting in Photoshop you can change the size of your brushes with the left or right bracket so I can change the size of this brush so I can get down and if I want to do some detail work get right on that edge I can zoom in okay and remember if I want to paint inside the flower I want to paint white so I'm painting white and now I'm painting right inside there you can actually see where that edge is I paint white on purpose and go out this way okay so there's green I'm essentially revealing that with a mask well, I can fix that by just go in and I paint some black on the mask and I can erase that out alright so we go in here and with this mask I can refine basically my selection that's why I really like having this mask I think this is really the nuts it, it really helps you make a very good selection so let's say I'm happy with that so this is what I want for my flower and the last thing you may want to do uh, is we want to probably crop this down because we don't need an image to be so big so I can go in here and crop and we can bring this in so I'm basically just the size of the flower and say okay so now I've cropped the picture and I typically want to because I went to this work I want to save this as a PSD so I have a PSD for my yellow flower so I'm gonna save this I already have one here saved off but I can go ahead and write over that let's call this I don't want to overwrite that one so let's call this yellow flower 2 and hit save so that's a PSD and now for uh, After Effects you really what you'd like to do is just have just a ping file so I can take this and save again do a save as and instead of it being a Photoshop file let me go here and bring this down and what we want to save this as is a PNG file so I'm going to save this as yellow flower PNG so here let's hit save you can see I saved one before just take those features and shrink that down and now let me bring up After Effects and you can see I did this before so let me delete that one and I'm going to bring in the one we just did which is yellow flower 2 say OK Here's yellow flower 2. I drop that into my composition. And you can see that this yellow flower now is uh, transparent. And so you see the flower in the foreground, and we see the stars in the background. So this is flowers in space, but basically you get the point. You can go in here, and, uh, and uh, you, you have the background is transparent. Uh, the foreground is your object. 
and you can scale it you can use it in Photoshop or After Effects and so now you have a foreground and a background object so hopefully this will help you out uh, like I said this is a common thing I know almost all the students in After Effects uh, want to do and it's a very easy with Photoshop Photo Photoshop makes it pretty quick and easy and uh, you can isolate your foreground object from your background object thanks again bye